using math as add, I'm going to divide. And then I'm going to send this to an output. And so now my number is going to be the amount of seconds divided by 5 equals the result. And if I pull that into the diamond global rotation, you're going to see that the diamond rotates extreme a lot slower. If I set this constant value to 10 and then play that back, it goes even slower than that. So it's a quick way of setting up a continuous animation without actually having to keyframe everything, especially if you keep increasing or decreasing your timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a camera. If you click this little button right here, you'll look through the camera. I'm going to adjust my field of view length so that it's more of like a telephoto look. So I'm going to have a bunch of footage, but I'm just going to focus on this one particular shot. And for this camera movement, I'm going to have it pan upwards. Go to animation, select all, set that to linear. And so then when we look through this camera, we're going to get this nice slow pan with our diamond rotating. And with a quick preview, we can see how it's going to look. And then now with that set up, uh, I need to start setting this entire scene up to render out. And the idea is we're going to separate a lot of this up into multi-passes, so when we pull this into uh, After Effects, we can then play with it then. So we're going to have the diamond be one buffer channel. So you're going to, uh, real quick, select a compositing tag, and then in the object buffer, set that as one. In the plane, we're going to right-click Cinema 4D tags. We're going to go to a compositing tag, and we're going to enable this as buffer number two. And the idea behind that is that uh, After Effects will see buffer one as one object itself, buffer two, and it'll create like an auto mask so we don't have to render out another huge QuickTime file to put into After Effects uh, of a, uh, a buffer mask. And then what we're going to do is go to our render settings and for my output I'm going to be using 720p which is HD resolution um, I am going to render only up till 300 or I'm sorry 150 and then in the save options I am going to choose an RPF sequence and I'm going to make sure all of these are selected except these. I still don't know what they do. Set these at 8 bit um, with two, the alpha channel and a 24 bit dithering on. We're also going to want to turn on the After Effects project and include the 3D data. Then we're also going to want to turn on our multi pass channel. And you want to save this in the same folder. So I'm. So there's my diamond sequence. I'm just going to copy this path and paste it right here. And in the multi-pass is turned on. Uh, that's good. Now we need to start dropping stuff into the multi-pass. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in our first two object buffers. Object buffer A and object buffer B, number 1 and number 2. And then we're going to just add in an RGBA. We're going to add in a refraction we want to possibly add in a reflection and we might and we also is there anything else we need to add in for this oh caustics of course we need to add that in as well and that will be a separate pass and we can bump up the color on that and then uh, let's see let's also add in material color that might be good as well our options are good, caustics are beautiful, and um, I guess from there what you can do is render away. 
All right, so now we're on to part two of this, which starts with After Effects. So let's go ahead and pull in our project. So go to your project tab, double click on that, and then you want to find your diamond sequence. And then if you save it out in an RPF sequence and you have the AEC file saved, just go ahead and click that once and click open. I'm just going to drop in these two folders. Now select these two folders and put those into another folder, and let's just call this 3D. That way we can keep that organized. And inside of this composition, we're just going to double click this composition tag. And then in special passes, we're going to drop in our RPF sequence right at the bottom. Now let's go ahead and start turning off a couple of these things. Uh, we're not going to use any of the lights, so we can delete those. And we are just going to turn these off for a second to get a quick look. The diamond RPF sequence right there. We have the diamond caustics, which is the floor, and you can see it's really well lit. And then we have the diamond reflection, and then and then we have the refractions right here. So the reflection one didn't come out looking very well, but we can play with these two. I'm going to start off with this diamond, and then if we go to ID, we can find the ID mat. Double click on that. And in the ID mat, we are going to focus on ID, let's see, number one is just the diamond, number two is the floor. So we're going to need a diamond, one for the diamond, duplicate it, and the second one, we're going to set ID two, which is the floor, and we'll rename this real quick. Beautiful. And now let's go ahead and see uh, as far as our diamond cause it or our refraction. So for this diamond, let's go to curves. Drop that in. We're going to bring the intensity of this diamond down. There we go. Perfect. Then we're going to turn on our refraction. And the refractions seem a little too bright, a little too intense. So let's drop a curves onto this as well. And then I'm going to take this same diamond channel and we're just going to focus in on this. I'm going to go to Luma Key. And what Luma Key is going to do is as you increase the threshold, areas that aren't as dark are going to be keyed out. And what we want to do is focus primarily on these really bright highlights. So I'm going to move this to about 200. I'm going to give it a slight edge feather. So I'm going to give it a feather of one. In this particular channel, we're going to go to a trap code plugin called Starglow. And if you don't have it, you can uh, simulate it. But what Starglow will do is give us this uh, prism effect. And we can boost the light or the length. I'm going to boost the length of this. And I'm going to bring down the source opacity just a second and the Starglow opacity. I'm going to turn that off, and you can see how we get that uh, the bending of the colors kind of like artificially right there. And then for this refraction channel, I'm also going to go to box blur, and I'm going to set this to 0.5 so that the diamond edges aren't so unbearably sharp. And then we're going to focus in on the floor. Now the floor is a little intense, so what we're going to do is go to a curves channel. We're going to go ahead and bring the curves, the floor down color-wise. And I'm also going to go to the blue channel. And I'm going to bump this up a little bit. And that will create a nice little floor background.
There you go. And then let's turn on the Diamond Gossix channel. And we're going to do a little box blur. Repeat edges. And we're going to kind of blur this up a little bit. So let's do three. And then also let's go to our saturation. Hue saturation. Go ahead and add that channel on. And we're going to boost up the saturation of the colors just a little bit. So those individual colors pop a little bit more. And then as I quickly play this in a quick RAM preview, you can see that uh, it looks pretty half decent. So that's how easy it is to make a diamond in 3D. Um, so once again, this is Al from RenderReady.com. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will talk to you soon. All right, so the tutorial is done, and I hope you enjoyed it. Keep in mind that I'm making all this stuff up as I go along, so I can quite possibly be tainting you with hundreds of bad techniques. But as always, you can't beat my price. And stay tuned, or keep informed of upcoming tutorials, random questions, or thoughts that just pop out of my brain by checking me out at my Facebook fan page here, or on my Twitter account here. I hope you enjoyed the time we spent together, and as always, this is Al from RenderReady.com, and thank you again for your time.